Hey everyone, Michael and Natalie here, and today we're talking about what to do when we're feeling down. Oh man, feeling sad and down is just as bad as feeling guilty. I'm really glad we're talking about this today. Me too, because when I'm feeling down, sometimes I feel lonely too. Mm -hmm. But you know what? What? God is always there to comfort us. He never leaves us and He knows everything we are going through. That's true. In fact, He promises that when we look to Him for help, He can't help but draw near to us too. Isn't that so comforting? It sure is. And it makes me want to say thank you. Everyone stand up and get ready to worship with us. It's time to stop and thank God for how great He is. It's so good to be reminded of who God says we are when we believe that the Lord Jesus Christ is our Savior. You know, God says that we are chosen, that we are not forsaken, that we are His children. So let's receive that today with open hearts as we sing this out together.
TV or a video on YouTube about building or construction? Well, I have the honor of being one of the hosts of the hit construction show, Build It, with my good pal, Skip. Take a look at what happened when we were filming our latest episode. Hey, Skip, how's it going? Did you get that toilet situation fixed? Sue's, Sue's, Sue's. Toilet situation? We don't have time for your bathroom humor today. I expected more from you. What? No, Skip, don't you remember? The pipes are broken and now the toilet is out of order. If we try to use it, it will literally explode, like water everywhere. Never fear, I just need to brush up. Maybe we should call a plumber. Nah, I got this. Okay. Well, I wouldn't wait too long if I were you. It's the only toilet in the building, and if it's not working, that could spell trouble. Suze, you worry too much. It'll get done. I'm counting on you. We don't have a lot of time. But really, what is time? Plus, I just need to finish a few things around here. Like this Zing Cola. <sighs> 128 ounces of pure deliciousness. Now, this Minecraft tower isn't going to build itself. <laughs> and if I had to choose between Minecraft and a toilet, well, that's a no-brainer. Oh man, um, okay. So, that 128 ounces of cola is kind of sneaking up on me. Um, Skip, mind over matter. Think about something that doesn't have to do with what needs to happen. Like, I don't know, um, waterfalls or a big swimming pools or ha ha. Didn't work, didn't work. Okay, time to do the dance, time to do the dance. Not working either. Um, I gotta do what I gotta do. This is not a good look. What have I done? Oh no, Skip. I was gonna ask what happened, but I think I already know. Suze, this is awful. Today was going so great. I had my Minecraft, a soda the size of my head. I was just kicking back, living my best life. Now this is the worst day ever. I... I just don't even say it. I know what you're gonna say. 
I told you so, Skip. You should have fixed the toilet, or at least tried to call a plumber. But that'll make me feel even worse. Skip, I was gonna say I'm sorry you feel down. Yeah, you made a mistake, but I will help you get all cleaned up and it'll be good as new. Really, Suze? Really, really. You know what would make me feel better? A hug. Are you sure that's the only thing that will make you feel better? Oh, come on, Suze. It's just a small gesture, and it would bring me so much comfort. Okay, okay. Hugs are the best. Um, give me one second. Okay, ready for that hug now. Oh man, those are some serious feelings we're dealing with here. I think there's something important we can all learn from that. Whenever we start to feel our emotions building up, we need to deal with how we feel and here are three steps into doing just that. The first step is to stop and figure out what we're really feeling. This can be tough, but it's important because if we're not careful, we can let our emotions get the best of us. If that happens, things can seem worse than they actually are, which can cause us to make decisions that we can't undo. So let's stop right now and talk about the emotions we just saw. Skip was worried about the mess he had made, he felt guilty for not taking care of the toilet problem before it was too late, and he felt so sad about being covered in toilet water that he started to put himself down. When we don't take time to deal with feelings like these, we'll miss out on the joy that comes from knowing that God wants to be a friend who comforts us when we're down. So now that we've stopped and figured out how we're feeling, the next thing we need to do is look. Looking helps us to see what's really going on. Skip was feeling so down that he thought his whole day was ruined. But all Skip had to do was look around to see that the mess could be cleaned up, I was right there to help, and the rest of the day could actually be better. Skip needed to take a few minutes to do step three. Does anybody know what step three is? We've got to listen to God's blueprint for life, the Bible. God gave us the Bible as the blueprint for how we should deal with what we feel. Here, check this out. Hey everybody, listen up. Here's what God has to say. Oh yeah, what you got for us today? Today we're talking about when we feel down. Oh, that's the worst feeling. Like when you get a bad grade or your brother knocks over your Lego tower. The one that took over a week to build. When you're feeling down, you can remember it's not the end of the world. God is always there to comfort you. This reminds me of a guy in the Bible named Jonah and how God comforted him when he was feeling down in the dumps. Oh man, did his best friend move away? That would make me feel pretty upset. That would be hard to deal with. But Jonah was down because he didn't want to do something that God had asked him to do. God asked him to go to a place called Nineveh and tell the people living there to stop being bad. Makes sense. Get them to stop being bad. Like, hey guys, cut it out! Done and done. Easy. Well, there was just one problem. Jonah didn't want to go to Nineveh. He knew the people there were not acting the way that they should, but instead of helping them, he thought they should be punished for their mistakes. So what, he wanted God to like, ground them or something? Something like that. Instead of listening to God and going to Nineveh, Jonah took off in the opposite direction. Oh no! Oh yes, Jonah ran all the way to the sea, found a ship, and paid the captain to let him come aboard. 
Then Jonah found a place inside to lay down and take a nap. Taking a snooze? Not listening to God must be pretty exhausting. I'm not sure, but as soon as the boat left the shore, a very bad storm came up and started tossing the boat around. Back and forth and back and forth. I bet there was lightning. Crash! And thunder. <coughs> and waves crashing over the boat. Everyone was so afraid that they started to throw their stuff overboard in hopes that they wouldn't drown. Overboard! The captain went to find Jonah and said, How can you sleep? Get up and pray to your God. Maybe he can help us. Meanwhile, the sailors decided that the storm was Jonah's fault. They were probably all like, Jonah, what have you done? Make it stop. Exactly. And Jonah told them, I believe in the Lord, the God of heaven, who made the sea and the land, and I am running away from something God asked me to do. It's my fault this is happening. If you throw me into the sea, the storm will stop. Speaking of stops, stop right there. Are you saying that Jonah told the sailors to throw him off the boat? I mean, I get it that Jonah probably fell down because he was putting these men in this storm, but that's crazy talk. You heard me right. The men didn't want to do it, but after praying, they knew they had to. They picked up Jonah and threw him into the water. Instantly, the storm was over and the sea became still. So that's the end of Jonah? No, no way, get this. When they threw Jonah off the boat, he was swallowed up by a great big fish. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? God actually sent the fish to keep Jonah from drowning and he stayed in the fish for three days and three nights. Oh man, that's comforting, but I can't even imagine. No windows and covered in disgusting fish guts for three whole days? Yuck! While Jonah was inside the fish, he did a lot of praying and said, When my life was nearly over, I remembered you, Lord. My prayer rose up to you. You are the one who saves. Then God told the fish to spit Jonah out onto dry land. <laughs> I bet Jonah was happy to be out of that fish. He probably needed the longest shower in the history of showers. Then the Lord told Jonah a second time to go to Nineveh and tell the people there to stop being bad. Please tell me he listened this time. Oh, he sure did. Jonah obeyed God and left for Nineveh right away. When Jonah got there, he told the people to stop doing bad things or their city would be destroyed. To Jonah's surprise, the people listened, and the city was saved. And they all lived happily ever after. The end. Well, that could be the end of the story, except Jonah left the city feeling down. He was upset that God didn't punish them all. So Jonah went on a hill and sulked. When God saw Jonah, he knew how Jonah was feeling and comforted him. God explained to Jonah that he loves everyone and would rather see people turn from their bad ways and do good again. So God comforted Jonah when he was feeling down? Yep, and he'll comfort us too, no matter what we're going through. Even in the belly of a fish? Even in the belly of a fish. Because when we're feeling down, God comforts us. As you saw from that true story, Jonah made some decisions that left him feeling sad. But God came alongside Jonah and comforted him. Feelings of sadness can come and go for so many different reasons. But the truth is, God knows how we're feeling and He's right there with us. When we stop, look, and listen, we will feel God comforting us each time in sadness. So whenever you're feeling down, remember the truth that God comforts you. And that's what we need to know today. Everybody say it with me. When I feel down, God comforts me. That's it. When you find yourself feeling down this week, be sure to stop and invite God to help you. Tell him all about your feelings and trust that he will comfort you. Okay, but what about those times that I can't really tell if he can hear me or not? Like when I pray and I tell him about why I'm feeling down, but I don't really feel much better afterwards. Good questions. First, ask yourself, did I also thank God for at least one thing? Hmm. If not, then be sure to tell him at least one thing you are thankful for, and then tell him one thing you love about him too. And if that doesn't help, then we go back to the truths that we find in scripture that reminds us that God is always there for us even when we don't feel it and choose to believe it. And that reminds me of our verse. Even if we don't feel at ease, 
God is greater than our feelings and he knows everything. 1 John 3, 20. That's right. Because sometimes we don't feel like anyone understands what we are going through and sometimes we don't always feel like God is there, but that doesn't mean it's true. It's true. Sometimes we just have to have faith and trust that God is greater than what we feel. Yes, He is. Let's pray. God, thank you for always being there for us. Thank you for comforting us and for helping us through the hard times when we feel sad and down. Help us to trust that your word is true even when we don't feel that you're near us. We love you. Amen. Amen. See you next time.